We begin with the universe being a mass of black water, where Ra wills himself into existence. So Ra sucks up a lot of the dark water and spits out two kids, who he promptly names Shu and Tefnut. Ra sends the two infant children out to eat the darkness and chaos, but immediately loses them, because everything is still a dark murky water. So he makes an eye for himself and sends it out to go find them. But shocker, the eye can't see anything in the literal darkness water. So the eye bumbles his way back to Ra and sees that he's been cheating on him with a different eye. This pisses the first eye off. Ra, like any good boyfriend, makes up excuses that he needed the other eye, or he was lonely. To compensate for his actions, he allows the first eye to be the sun and the second eye to be the moon. So the first eye, appeased he's not the side hoe, returns to Ra's face, where Ra immediately begins crying because both of his hoes are so beautiful. And those tears turn into men and women. Oh, remember those twins from earlier? Well, they bonded and banged. The twins make another set of twins who, while in the womb, they name Geb and Nut. The only issue is that the twins are so attached that they physically will not come out their mother's womb. So Shu gets mad and rips open Tefnut's womb and in anger separates the twins forever, making one the earth and one the sky. Nut then gives birth to five more gods because, because she was banging her twin in the womb. Ra, getting a little jealous that everybody's having kids but him, conceives a child within himself and gives birth to his own son, who he names Thoth. Remember how everything's still darkness water? Well, Ra doesn't really like that. So he takes his eye, the sun, and makes it into a solar boat, which he uses to rise above the dark water and begin riding on it. Immediately after he does this, he peezes out and turns into a beetle. Horus and Thoth decide to accompany him. The only issue is that on the boat there isn't much to do. Horus and Thoth get bored and have a jacking off contest, where when both their seamen hits the deck of the boat, it combines and makes the goddess of truth and the goddess of revival. Then a pharaoh just kind of appears on the boat, and Horus decides, oh, you're the perfect person to keep this drinking water at the perfect temperature, which is what all pharaohs do nowadays. Ra gets tired of being a beetle, so he decides to become the sun god as the sun comes up. But when the stars come out, he becomes a human named Atum. And as they sail behind the western mountains, they approach the underworld, which is given no explanation besides that there is an army of evil who wants all the gods dead and the world in chaos. Also, that the army is led by a giant snake named Apophis, who spews out a black mist. Apophis attacks the boat, and a tomb steps up to the plate and fires the sun at him. To counterattack, the massive snake causes an eclipse, blocking out the sun. Atum gets pissed and turns into a sword cat, and in his sword cat form, he cuts up Apophis, cutting him into many little pieces. These pieces stain the evening sky and are the reasons that we have sunsets. And so they lived happily ever after, except they didn't because people started plotting against Ra. So Ra had a sex reassignment surgery and changed his Twitter handle to Rardale Dingleton Uwu becoming a lion woman with massive tits called Sekhmet, and sending his eyes to ban everybody who didn't agree with him. After the great banning was complete, Ra changes himself into a cow, and flies up to Nut, mounting her. The other gods, wanting some of the action, grab onto Ra's cow tits, and ride up into the heavens with him, becoming the stars. And so, people and the gods were forever separated. Come on, like a vista, nigga talking.